Welcome to this lecture on the physiology of swallowing and the physiology of the esophagus. It's called block eight. So what do we need to know about swallowing? Um, besides the fact that it's when food goes down your esophagus toward from your oral cavity to your stomach. Um, we need to know that swallowing is a reflex. It is a automatic response to a stimulus and this automatic response is triggered by impulses from um, by afferent impulses from uh, the trigeminal nerve uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagal nerves so now as these nerves are st uh, stimulated um, by the presence of food and the motions of chewing they send signals into your brain stem specifically the solitary tract or also known as the tractus solitarius and the ambiguous nucleus, also known as the nucleus ambiguous. Uh, they're both in the mandala of Bongata. So we have signals going from the mouth, from the tongue, to the brain stem, to the mandala of Bongata. And from the fibers, then efferent fibers, then go to your pharyngeal muscles and your tongue, um, which triggers off these involuntary pharyngeal muscle contractions. So got food in your mouth, your tongue pushes the food back, afferent signals suddenly fire off to the brainstem, brainstem sends efferent signals, and then um, involuntary contractions of the pharyngeal muscles uh, occur, and this is referred to as peristalsis, those involuntary muscle contractions that propel uh, food down through the pipe. And initially this is primary peristalsis, and that is initiated by the brainstem. However, as these peristaltic waves go down from the pharynx to the esophagus, they trigger off some pacemaker cells in the esophagus, which in and of themselves can initiate peristalsis, and then you have secondary peristaltic waves uh, in the esophagus. Because they're not, uh, not triggered by the brain standard referred to as the secondary waves. Okay, so do we have this ring of contracted muscle behind the food? As, it's, as this ring moves forward, pushes the food uh, down, and it keeps this peristaltic ring, uh, keeps going down and down and down until it hits the lower esophageal sphincter. And the speed that it can push food down is about 4 centimeters uh, per second. Although, in an upright position, for the power of gravity, food will usually fall ahead of that peristaltic. Okay, so there are multiple pipes in your chest. Um, there's the pharynx, uh, which is a common pipe for uh, air and food. And then this pipe divides into two. It divides into the trachea, which is a pipe for air, and divides into a pipe for food called the esophagus. And so we need to make sure that um, food goes into the correct pipe. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have something called an epiglottis just above your voice box, which is a leaf-shaped um, structure, uh, projects backwards uh, just behind the tongue, and when you swallow, uh, the tongue pushes this epiglottis down, it partly closes the larynx, and that helps to prevent food going into the trachea. Not only that, but we have to make sure that um, food isn't forced up uh, into your nose and doesn't come out of your nostrils. So when you swallow, the soft palate rises up uh, to try and block off the uh, entrance into the nasal cavity, into the nasopharynx. Not only that, but your hyoid bone and your larynx, uh, that was your voice box structures, they rise uh, during swallowing. Uh, this uh, reflexively stops you from breathing, uh, reduces the space available for trachea and that further reduces your risk of food entering the trachea. Now to control the food uh, food flow as it were to make sure that food is always going in one direction through the pipe and not coming up the other direction uh, we have sphincters so what we want is basically we want food to stay in the stomach we do not want stomach uh, contents to leave and enter the esophagus we do not want 
esophageal contents to leave the esophagus and enter the mouth. Um, so we have two sphincters uh, to try and prevent that. Um, to prevent food from going from the esophagus into the pharynx, we have the upper esophageal sphincter, sphincter also called the pharyngeal esophageal sphincter or cricopharyngeal sphincter. It's located in the upper part of the esophagus and it's formed by the cricopharyngeal muscle, uh, the inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscle, and some circular muscle at the upper end of the esophagus. And they have uh, two functions. Um, when they contract, uh, they, um, they uh, assist with the swallowing mechanism. Uh, and um, when, they are, when they are contracted, they also prevent reflux from the esophagus into the pharynx. And that helps to uh, protect uh, the entrance to the trachea to, uh, and helps prevent aspiration from the esophagus Okay, so here's a line diagram I made of the upper esophageal sphincter. The reason I decided to make a line diagram is because if you look at the anatomy, um, if you had to have an, an anatomical slide, it can actually be quite confusing. Um, so I'd rather teach you this line diagram and then you can sort of fiddle around with anatomical slides and pictures um, just to um, be able to identify all the structures. Um, but to understand the uh, upper esophageal sphincter, you really just need to know that there's a pharyngeal constrictor muscle a cricopharyngeal muscle and the striated muscle in the esophagus. Got the trachea here, mouth here. So food goes in and uh, there's prevention of regurgitation upwards down into your lungs uh, through the contractions of your constrictor muscle and cricopharyngeal muscle and your striated muscle. And these then form the upper esophageal sphincter to prevent reflux into your mouth and into your chest or into your lungs rather. esophageal sphincter, we should have a lower esophageal sphincter, and uh, in the lower part of the esophagus, usually uh, there's a lot of muscle, ten mus uh, muscle tenacity uh, in the lower esophageal sphincter, so usually the lower part of the esophagus is closed, and uh, these muscles uh, are in a spasm as it were, and they only relax uh, when you swallow, uh, and uh, only to try and allow food to pass through from the esophagus into the stomach. But most of the time, it's tonic, it's spastic, uh, it closes off the esophagus to prevent acid from coming out of the stomach into the esophagus to prevent food contents coming out of the stomach into the esophagus. And this lower esophageal sphincter consists of three parts. First of all, the intrinsic sphincter, uh, which consists of smooth muscle from the esophagus itself, and ex the extrinsic sphincter, which is formed by skeletal muscle from the diaphragm that surrounds the esophagus. Really. The esophagus has to go as a, um, starts at the uh, end of the pharynx, goes through the chest, and has to cross through the diaphragm to enter the stomach. Uh, so where it crosses through the diaphragm, that, that diaphragmatic muscle also assists with sphincter uh, as, a, uh, as part of the sphincter mechanism. And in the stomach itself, there are uh, uh, sling muscle fibers they are called uh, in the stomach wall, and they also um, form a flap valve type mechanism um, that also contributes to the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay, a little drawing just to summarize what I said. Um, we've got our intrinsic um, sphincter uh, made of smooth muscle from the esophageal lining, and when this muscle contracts, uh, this uh, sphincter shortens. And the effect is for um, these two bulges to squeeze against each other uh, due to the shortening. And we've got an extrinsic sphincter made from diaphragmatic skeletal muscle, and this sort of uh, wraps around the esophagus. And uh, when it contracts, it almost ties the esophagus um, closed. And we've got our sling fibers and fundus of the uh, stomach, and when they contract, uh, it pushes the stomach wall sort of a bit more nearer to the opposite end, creating a sort of valve, a, a flap valve uh, type thing. And that's the low esophageal sphincter. So that will, uh, the com uh, combined action of um, our valves 
to our muscles here yeah, is to prevent, is to close off this um, esophageal-gastric junction, prevent reflux um, from the stomach into the esophagus. Doesn't always work, um, and when it doesn't work, we, we end up having heartburn. So some people have um, don't have great uh, low esophageal sphincters, especially our Africana population and the white population in general. Genetically, white people are prone to having weakness of the low esophageal sphincter and more prone, therefore, to heartburn. Um, Indian patients who eat a lot of spice, uh, and that's not so much a genetic thing, it's more of a cultural thing, but people with high spicy, uh, people with diets with a lot of spice and will also tend um, to suffer from heartburn, but that's more due to the stimulation of acid due to the spice, which then uh, manages to bubble through uh, the lower esophageal sphincter. And those are my references.